Hey there everybody, Sean Larson, realtor in the Franklin Brentwood, Tennessee area. Just wanted to run through a little bit of home information today with you. I know a lot of times when people are watching reno shows on TV or reading magazines or maybe even viewing uh, homes in person, you may either hear terms or see things in a home that you're not sure what they're talking about. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run through a few house parts today. Some of those are going to be obvious and some of those may answer the question of, oh, that's what they were talking about. <laughs> so we're just going to run through a few in this home and Maybe you'll pick something up along the way. This type of ceiling is called a coffered ceiling. That type of trim work that you see on the wall, on the lower portion of the wall, is called wainscoting or wainscoting, depending where you are. Everybody pronounces it a little bit differently. That top part right here is often called a chair rail, and you can sometimes see that without the trim work below it. On steps, this is called the riser, and this is called the tread. The lights you see in the ceiling there are recessed, but on a job site, you'll also hear them called can lights. The doors used on this study are referred to as French doors. That panel you see on the wall is often called a cold air return because that is where your heating unit pulls the air in and then produces either cool or warm air to uh, return it through the vents in your home. You may have several of those if you have several HVAC units on your home. If you ever hear anybody talking about putting receptacles in the baseboards, that's what they mean. Mounting them in the baseboard instead of on the wall. The trim you see up at the ceiling is what is called crown molding. And this doorway with trim around it is what is called a cased opening. It does not have a door, but it is trimmed out. This ceiling is pretty unique. This could be referred to as a coffer within a tray because you have the trayed ceiling around the outside and then you have a unique coffer ceiling within it. This little device lets the window tilt in for cleaning. You simply pull or slide this back and unlocks and lets the window tilt in. Also on windows, if it is a double hung window, that means the top portion will also slide down and is not fixed in position. That glass portion above a door is referred to as a transom. If you ever hear somebody say it was flanked with lantern lights or light fixtures, it simply means one was on each side. So for example, this mirror was flanked with lantern lights. When designing a closet, they refer to half length and full length hanging. On the left here, you see two rows of half length, and then right here in front of us is full length. If you notice on this shower door, it is just glass. There is no metal frame on it. That is what, what they refer to as a frameless glass shower door. This home has a bluish gray ceiling on the outside porches. Uh, not only does it look good, but the theory is that helps keep birds from nesting in here and deters some bugs from nesting as well. If someone refers to a cedar beam mantle, that's what that is. You can build them two ways. It can actually be one solid beam or it can be a structure wrapped with a thinner cedar board. This is your kitchen island, but this part right here is often called a corbel and it can not only be on an island, this somewhat looks like it's holding up the granite, but you see that as an exterior element too on some homes around the roof line. The two-tone finish that you see right here in the cabinets that dark in the creases there, that is what they call glazing. The glazing doesn't have to be dark, it can be the opposite. You could have a dark cabinet and then have like a white or a lighter glazing and it just highlights the edge work or the creases there. If a drawer or door doesn't slam shut, that's referred to as a soft close. See how it kind of pulls it in slowly? You can do the same thing on drawers and cabinet doors. This ceiling would be referred to as a barrel ceiling with maybe a coffered type trim in the middle. This finish on the granite is often called leather textured, which means it's not completely slick. 
This is your laundry or your hookup for your washer. The small things on top of the hookups right here, those are virtually shock absorbers. When you have water that's traveling very quickly through a line, if you were to shut it off rapidly, that water still has momentum. And so the space inside of those helps keep pipes from banging and helps absorb uh, the momentum from that w moving water. This is in contrast to the other shower door we saw. See, this one does have a metal frame around it on both sides here, where the other one was frameless. This is what's referred to as a drawer style microwave. That's a six burner cooktop. You can have a different combination of those. You can have four, five, six, and you can do a combo where you might have four with a griddle in the center. Just some options on that. And above that, you have a vent hood, which vents the fumes and steam. A uh, note on that, if you're buying a home, there are several types of those. Some vent completely to the outside and others don't. Others just run the air through a filter and recirculate it back into the home. Here are some of your HVAC units. The small one here has the line going inside. This is what's called a split unit because the other part of that is installed in the home. That's traditionally for an upstairs or second level there. This other unit is what's called a package unit. All of the components are contained in this one unit. And if you see how that goes flush up to the home, that's traditionally used for the first floor in the event you have vents that are in the floor. All the ductwork is run under the home and then feeds the vents in the floor for level one. This white line is a condensation line. When you run your air conditioner, some water uh, condensation will develop and then that comes and drains outside. The large line you see on the outside here, that is a gas or a propane line for the HVAC unit for your heat. These are foundation vents that allow the crawl space of your home to ventilate. Another system used is an encapsulated crawl space that will not have vents on the outside, but they rather seal it up and then feed a little bit of your HVAC air into the crawl space to condition that. If you ever see a key like that, that is to turn the gas on and off for a fireplace. And here's an example of one of those inside. This fireplace already has gas logs installed, but if you ever see a pipe coming out in the fireplace there and there aren't any logs, that is what's referred to as being stubbed out. They have prepped it for hookup for gas. What's this rope? It's from the garage door opener. We, people occasionally ask what that's for. Uh, when your garage door is open or closed, if power goes out and you should need a manual release to move the door, you simply pull it and it changes the engagement device and you can manually open or close the door. This is a central vacuum cleaner. It is the piped all throughout the home and you can hook up in wall fixtures and this unit will suck all of the dirt to this one central location and you just empty this bucket. This is a no freeze hose bib. If you notice here at the bottom, it's got a larger attachment. Uh, that means um, this, this hose bib actually shuts off further in the wall. So, uh, and that's to help, it, you know, help prevent it from freezing. So if you do turn it off, after you turn it off, you still see a little bit of water come out. And that was the water between the shutoff inside the wall and this end here. This ceiling is referred to a tray ceiling. They can be a lot of different shapes. This one is just a simple square design. This is a water heater. A couple items on this. The red pump right there, that is a circulating pump. So it will continuously circulate water throughout the home through a loop. So you uh, have instant hot water at any a faucet within probably about just a few seconds. This isn't to be confused with a, an, a tankless water system that, that gives you quick hot water, but this actually circulates it through the home. All the plumbing you see here at the bottom, this is a drip pan or a leak pan that is plumbed into the home, and that way if the tank should ever leak, it doesn't uh, cause any damage to the home, but actually just uh, goes out the sewer pipe. Large pipe here is the propane fed to the tank for heating. And then the top, you see the vent where the fumes exit. 
Earlier we talked about the shock absorber on the water pipes in the laundry. That large unit up top there right in the center, that is the same thing. It's another shock absorber for the water. Here is where you'd hook up to the central vac unit. If you just flip it up, the hose goes right in there, and this supplies the power and everything to the unit that you use to vacuum the floors. If you notice in this home, the sheetrock corners are round instead of square. That's normally called bull nose, and that's kind of the shape of it. You'll hear bull nose also for a edge finish on things like granite and marble. It's just kind of the shape there. So that's bull nose instead of being a right angle or a squared off corner. When you do bull nose corners though, it's not only the edge of the sheetrock, but look at this. Now you have three pieces of trim to make a corner. And that can make a difference in trim labor when you're finishing out a home. And that difference isn't necessarily for the materials, but actually the labor. Because if you see every time you have to cut multiple pieces, not only on your base molding, but also on your crown molding as well. This home uses a variety of finishes on the faucets. Uh, this is what you would call a bronze or an oil rub bronze. This would be a polished chrome. This would be a satin nickel. And this would be a brush stainless, which goes great with the stainless sink in the kitchen. Well, there you go. There are just a few home parts. You might have known them all, but maybe you picked up one or two. So now when you're either watching TV or talking about home building, you'll know what they're talking about. See you next time.